This is the Hairy Man Road, and the legend of this place dates back to the 1800s, with settlers claiming to have encountered a wild hairy man often seen hanging in the trees. And in 1965, a high school football star claimed to be chased out of the area by a wild hairy man. The story caught like wildfire, and the road was given the name Hairy Man Road by the local postmaster. In 2019, while working on my first documentary project, I obtained a video of county officials claiming to have encountered what they called a Sasquatch, just off Hairy Man Road. That lot is dying, man. Dying? What do you mean? I saw a bit of Sasquatch. And in 2020, while recovering a trail camera, we discovered some small footprints along the Brushy Creek near Hairy Man Road. This film will document the recent activity of the area and offer evidence in the form of physical data, prints, and what could be a picture of one of these hairy beings. I was already aware that Bigfoot is real. I didn't know so much about Central Texas, but certainly in areas of East Texas. Um, and so I got on the BFRO website, Bigfoot Research Organization website, where they post investigations of people making claims of, of witnessing Bigfoot. And it's by county, so I went to Williamson County, and I found this description of this sighting that took place just right over there on the other side of that road. They're, they try to they try to not make the location obvious, but I was able to to kind of interpret it and look at Google Earth at the same time and pinpoint the actual location where the sighting took place which is where we're at right now, but just on the other side of that creek. And uh, so I came down here with a partner of mine, and we were on the other side of the creek. We walked across the creek, coming towards where we're at now, and I noticed a T-post that had been bent on a fence line. Now, on, this, on the other side of this fence line is a large acreage ranch, and there's, there's cliffs, there's caves, um, and it's a lot of land back here. And even going this way was the same way, and then the creek going the whole way. So the habitat was here. But we, when we crossed the creek, and I saw that bent T-post, um, I went up to it, try to figure out how that could have been bent because they're strong and it looked like something had crossed the fence there I turned around and I could see a perfect trackway of a Bigfoot and keep in mind I came here to disprove this and we were immediately like confronted with a trackway a very good trackway and uh, it went probably that's probably 40 feet and then you could even see where it stopped at the road, bent down, and it made a knuckle print where it put its, put its fist down, uh, we assume, because there was a car coming and it was ducking. But, uh, so that kind of, that kind of spun me around from trying to disprove it to being confronted with some pretty, to me, pretty significant evidence. But see, they couldn't have even, if this had been bent like this, they couldn't have even have driven this post into the ground. 
this happened after after his pity ended. It would have taken an incredible amount of pressure to do that. Uh, that is always good. I believe that in different parts of the United States, they have different habits. Um, in the, up in the Pacific Northwest, they'll actually follow the season. As the berries ripen, they'll, they'll be traveling north as the berries ripen. And uh, in Texas, I'm not so sure that they have that kind of migration. Um, I think they have a large range, used typically. Um, and they, and they might move around within that range. Um, but in a place like this, my guess is that, yeah, they have a certain range and area that they probably travel in. And, um, because this creek goes actually quite a long way. Yeah, okay, goes, so do you think they're uh... They're using the Brushy Creek as kind of like a, uh, a road or corridor. Gateway. Yeah, corridor. Um, that's how they seem to. They seem to move along waterways. So that would be my guess. Right. Okay. And what do you think would be the best time to to research or to go out and try to you know look for these things? Well, in other parts of Texas, we we don't research very much in the heat of summer mostly because it's extremely uncomfortable for the researcher but we also you know we don't know anything but some of us believe feel that they seem to hunker down in the summer too and just they find a cool spot and they and they don't move far from it in the summertime now you said you saw one track week. can you tell us the size of the feet how did they look um the the feet seemed, they were bare feet, large bare feet, kind of blocky in shape, and they were about 18 inches long. Oh, wow. And there was the trackway that we could see real well um, was probably was probably 30 feet of it, and uh, and the, the footsteps themselves were probably. Probably about four feet from each other. Pretty big. Yeah. Um, so, do you think it might have been uh, an adult juvenile? I think so. I think it was an adult. An adult I think it was an adult. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, just the 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 strength. I believe that it crossed this fence. It bent that T post down when it did because uh, it's kind of a hog fence with strands of barbed wire at the top, and I think it bit the T-post down to get over the barbed wire and then walk towards the road. So, and we went over on the other side of the road to look for prints. We couldn't find any, so we don't know where it went after that. So as a researcher, uh, a lot of the research done in Texas, usually done in the east, is, is Central Texas like a viable place? Do you think uh, it kind of gets overlooked because there's so much action going on in East Texas? Um, what we're find, what researchers are finding is that they're all over Texas, um, even in South Texas, in far South Texas. Uh, uh, I think the density of the population may thin out the harsher the environment, um, but Central Texas, again, I mean, just like Brushy Creek, it has everything they need. It's got, it's got food, it's got water, it's got shelter, it's got cover to move and uh, and they certainly seem to be able to tolerate I don't know how well but they seem to tolerate the heat in the summer so I think they could be anywhere in Texas And they, you know, when they have an area where they're birthing children and raising children and using to to 
feed themselves and their children when people come into it I think it's understandable that they would resent that and want to at least scare scare them out scare them away experience than I do. Oh, it's small water water wash through yeah. here. Um, I have heard stories of if you take Brushy Creek going east of I-35 and even east of Round Rock. Um, I've heard some stories out there. Um, there my partner and I did a, another investigation down by 183 um, closer to one Brushy Creek and 183 and there was this this one area that a bunch of four-wheel drive vehicles had come into this part of the land and just tore it up just I mean they just went in there it was obviously some young kids with their dad's trucks and uh, and they were just tearing up lots and lots of stuff a lot of destruction um, just tearing things up with their trucks and on the trail as we were walking out on the trail that the four-wheel drive trucks were using to get in and out of this area in the middle right in the middle of that little two track was a mutilated coyote And this coyote was mutilated in such a way that I find it extremely difficult to believe that a human being could have done it. This coyote was literally turned inside out and tied in a knot. All of its intestines, all the soft intestines were gone. Um, and, you know, without being too gra I don't want to get too graphic, but it literally broke its face inside and out, not just broke the lower jaw, but broke the face inside out. It looked like it reached down its throat, and now there's a tuft of hair coming out its throat that was the coyote's anus. And then the whole thing was just tied in a knot. And, uh, and it almost seemed to me like something very angry <laughs> had to have done that. And I didn't think that it was a coincidence that it was right where those four-wheel drive trucks come in and out of that, that area. So, I, I mean, I'll never know who or what did it, but I have a pretty good idea. Um, I, I don't think they're exclusively nocturnal. I think they are predominantly nocturnal. I think they move around a lot more uh, at night than they do during the, during the day but they're also out and around during the day as well. I have friends that are convinced that they live in caves, almost exclusively around the you know, continental United States. Uh, I don't know if I believe that, I believe that they do. If there's shelter available, they'll take advantage of it. They'll exploit it. Like I said, they're right in tune with nature. So, uh, but I don't think they need that. I've seen what I think are, are shelters that they've made with with branches and logs and things like that, um, where it's obvious that something's been large. It's obvious that something with a thumb built it, and something very large has been laying down in it. And uh, so I think they're capable of exploiting any cover and concealment that's available or manufacturing their own. Like the coyote down at the four-wheel drive trail, um, 
I think they have every reason to be angry at us if we're encroaching on their environment. And uh, they're kind of helpless to do anything about it, but I'm sure it makes them angry, you know. So, right there is where that house was, is where the siding was boarded. Instead of walk this way down the creek, came under the bridge, and he did it. He didn't see it after it went under the bridge, and that's where we went, and then crossed over to the to that T post. I believe that they are hominids. They're not human, but they're hominids. I believe that they're just a different branch on the same tree as we are. And where we spent millions of years separating ourselves from nature, getting further and further away from nature, uh, being able to control our climate, you know, as far as air conditioning and heating and things like that. Um, I believe for every step we took away from nature, they were completely absorbed in nature and, um, and learned to live within it perfectly. And I just think they're perfectly adapted, um, just even their, their size and their strength and, uh, and their brains. I believe they're very, very smart. I believe they're geniuses, actually. But they're on a whole other level from, from us. Um, be careful of just the, you know, the poison ivy and the rocks and the cliffs and things like that. Um, don't get too carried away and, uh, and just observe. Just keep your eyes open. Look for tracks and, and you know, fence. We talked about fence crossings and uh, uh, just be alert and aware and watchful and observant. And use your own intuition. The Brushy Creek runs along Harry Man Road, connecting most of the trails along the Brushy Creek to the road. With the recent construction taking place on Harry Man Road, encounters along the trail seem to have picked up. A local jogger wanted to show me some unusual tree structures he found along a trail during one of his runs. After going to the area and looking at the structures myself, it was hard to explain and even harder to believe an animal or man could do something like that. My name's David. Um, we are here at the uh, Brushy Creek Trail. Um, kind of run through here quite often, quite a bit, maybe four or five times a week during the day before I go to work um, just kind of kind of weird spot you kind of get a get an odd feeling here um, so this is the spot I kind of noticed uh, these trees you see up here to my right uh, a couple weeks back I was running through here and I just noticed the trees they were just almost seemed like they were snapped off as you can see here um, real odd first thing I thought was like lightning but you know as I looked at them you can kind of tell that it's not lightning you know it's just like the way you would grab a pencil and just break it off so they were definitely not there the prior prior day or week you know they weren't there you know and uh, I look for the rest of the trees they are gone they're not there 
It's kind of odd. You come down here pretty frequently. I come down pretty much on a daily basis just to get my run in for the day, you know, and uh, it's just odd the way they're they're broken off like that. You know, there's isn't much less two of them, you know. Two of them is like, okay, what the heck's going on, you know, it's kind of creepy. Um, but just in this general area, you'll kind of kind of start feeling a little creeped out once you once you come as often as I do you kind of get the chills a little bit not all the time you know certain parts of the trail that are like that you kind of get that to where like you know kind of look behind your back type you know to see what see if someone's coming or you turn one way or the other you kind of get that feeling like you're like uh the something ain't right feeling you know you get when when that happens uh but that's that's just the feeling this part of the creek gives you here Brushy Creek, um, always from the kids in high school, they're like the, you know, you always heard the Harry Man Road, and that kind of caught my interest as a kid, you know, in high school, but, you know, just never investigated what the Harry Man Road was and, uh, and just the Brushy Creek area, but, you know, I had driven by it, you know, always saw, you know, people kind of fishing down there and stuff like that, but never ventured out till till now. It, it, it can be a little bit of everything, you know, with, uh, with the, uh, the rituals that were performed around here by the, the Indians that dwelled in the area and it could also be what you know what we call cryptid uh, Bigfoot you know Sasquatch whatever you want to call it my opinion is that they can appear and reappear you know they see you before you see them and it'll only take less than a second and they'll be out of your way and you won't even you won't even know it you know mm -hmm. You know, people can call me crazy, but that's that's what it is. You know, there's something out there, and it's whether it's it's here or in another state, they're they're everywhere, man. Here, the area. I I mean, I asked. Yeah, I asked my uh, my neighbor, you know, he he told me they would frequent the area as kids, you know, always come down here fish and stuff. And I asked him uh, a couple weeks back, uh, his name's Jared, I said, Jared, uh, have you noticed anything down at the Brush Creek when you've been down there? Or, uh, frankly, I don't know how long it's been since he's been down here, but he's like, right away he was like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, you mean like something's watching you down there? I was like yeah have you felt that he's like yeah he's like it's pretty creepy down there man it's it's i felt that definitely before down there you know just something ain't right down there when you first reached out to me you had mentioned seeing something that you thought looked like a, a nest or some type of structure yeah can you tell me a little bit about that yeah it just you know it's off the this path further down um i saw it a couple months back and i used to ride my bike through here before i started running uh it just looked odd to me the way it was shaped but kind of the first couple times i saw it never never stopped to look at it, it just seemed odd till one day i came down with my brother and uh i was like let's go down there and check it out because i had told him and he's like well i've never seen anything and i ride through here too so we went and checked it out and it's got like a kind of like a dome type uh, feature to it to where like if you were to like sit in it it would like kind of protect you from 
rain or you could almost like curl up in a ball and sleep in it if you wanted to but it's got that that effect to it um and it was just odd to me that and that's in the general area where I get really freaked out like I'll run I'll start running or I'll ride my bike through there and I can just feel the hair on my neck and arm just pop up like <laughs> something ain't right Maybe before I started learning, before I knew all the things I know now, I would come out now. I, I don't think I could come down here after after dusk. I couldn't. It just it freaked me. It freaked me the heck out for coming down here at that time of evening or dusk, you know, or night at that. But no, I, w I wouldn't come down here at night. Not at all. So do you think the people or the city is aware of what's going on here and they're just not paying attention or do you think they're covering it up or do you have an opinion on that? I'm sure if, if they know about something going on, I'm sure they know the history of the place. Um, they do know whether or not they're going to say it to the public. I, I don't think they will. You know, it's not... It's not in their favor to, to go out and tell, well, well, you know, don't go down there because this, this, and this happens, you know, but they know. I mean, all government officials know what, what the heck's going on, you know. They're not going to say it to you, but they know. I mean, I just tell them to just, just keep your eye out, you know. Look at your surroundings, you know. Uh but also come out here and enjoy nature, you know? Not just because something is uh, weird or odd or you get that feeling, you know? You love nature, you're gonna come out, you know, and enjoy it, but just be precautious, because, you know, there's, there's strange things out there, man. You know, definitely. Looking at these uh, these big structures, do you know what these were intended for? If they were intended for anything? I mean, only the only the city knows. I mean, I to me, I mean that's a pretty elaborate structure for a bridge, you know, or for train tracks or just the way they're set up. I mean, you would think they would use something like this for like a you know like a Colorado River or something, but this is just a small little creek you know it's not that it doesn't have the size you know for it to do you know if the uh, train doesn't even run out here does it it does but it runs this way going from you know east to west or west to east and these are set up south to north or vice versa so it's I mean I don't know and then it's just weird to me. Yeah. What were you thinking the first time you saw these things? 
Um, it was just odd. Like I kind of figured, y'all, it's a bridge or something. It supports for a bridge, you know, or the train. But it was just odd to me. Like there should be other things, you know, that would hence that. But it just, it was just, it was interesting for sure. I saw them last year when I just started riding this trail out here um, during COVID. When you see them, does it uh, does it pique your curiosity? Does it creep you out? What do you feel when you see these things? Um, I mean, I'd like to find out the whole story behind them, see what uh, see what they're really meant for. Um, but creep me out? No, not really. I mean, other things creep me out back here, um, but it, it's definitely an oddity, just stuck in between uh, in this park, you know, kind of just odd. I mean, I think it just dates back to to old times, man. They were this stuff's been going on here for for ages before even Round Rock blew up. In my opinion, it's just it's been here. It's always gonna be here, and that's just it, you know. Um, that's my opinion. While working on this project, I was contacted by all types of people with stories regarding the hairy man activity in the area. From a Boy Scout troop, to a retired school teacher, and even people with military backgrounds. One of those military personnel reached out to me with an incredible story that took place near one of the trails along the Brushy Creek. The story and the witness's background were interesting but the pictures he took during his encounter of something hiding behind a tree are what really got my attention. My name is Jesse. Um, I'm a former Army soldier, veteran. Um, I was a former cop. I did investigator. I got a, history, a degree in history and political science. Um, I'm also an archaeology student. Um, so whenever I go on scene somewhere to investigate something, um, I try to look, use the scientific method to produce hard data, measurable, you know, measurable evidence. Yeah. Um, married, no kids, um, have a stepson and a dog, Ozzy. We're in uh, Brushy Creek off of the Rab House adjacent to us, to my left, um, off of uh, A.W. No, yeah, A.W. Grimes in 79. I usually run on there, I do exercise, I'll go on um, hikes, and uh, um, I started running here about maybe 2018 when I moved over here from uh, University Boulevard, and uh, um, I always felt like something was off a little bit, and uh, I've done ruck marches here with friends, I've done hikes, I hike uh, and ruck march once, once a week. Try to kill the, you know, if I don't want to run, you know, run because I run on it too. Um, I bring my dog, my wife out here, so. You did send me some interesting pictures. Yeah. Okay. Where the, can you give me a little bit of detail on those pictures? Were they taken in this area? Yes, just right over here. Okay. It was, the, the temperature was a little muggy, probably like 79, not 70, yeah, 79, 80-ish. A little, little muggy, a little humid. It just started getting humid. Um, I was ruck marching with a friend of mine. And uh, um, all of a sudden we saw like a, a figure or something. It was, it was a little off. We were at a distance though, but... I snapped a picture or two, and uh, I mean, it looks, I don't know what it was, it was probably kind of short, five, five, four, five, five. Um, it was just a little odd. It was kind of like peaking. What, once you, that's why I zoomed in on the picture, and you can see two, two areas where there, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could say it was eyeballs. That's what it looks like.
was a little weird. We got kind of freaked out about it, so we kind of took our time coming this way. Um, before that, we, we saw a, a lady wearing like some 1970s gym clothes saying that she was being followed or something. And then um, we, we went out to go check it out and there was nothing. The figure was gone. I mean, it could have been a person maybe messing with her, maybe trying to, you know, maybe a guy who was interested in her. I, I don't know. And there was a, uh, an imprint. Um, I know in this area there's no horses allowed. And I sent the, the, I have a friend who works on a ranch. He's worked on a ranch for quite some time. A guy that I served with in Iraq. And uh, he's a veterinarian too. And he was like, yeah, it kind of looks like a f horse print, but at the same time, that's way too big to be a horse print. Could it be the organism known as Bigfoot? Yeah, no, nobody knows. I know there's been a couple of accounts here from strange lights, orbs, um, things at night, sounds. Um, I was, like I said, I was, I was walking with a friend, we were just hiking, and we heard like a, like a cow type nose. It was like, Ooh. it was kind of weird, I mean, I. I know there's some cattle around here, so it could be that, but that was pretty near and it was pretty pretty loud. I never heard of, I was raised on a farm, you know, and we had cattle and I've never heard anything like that, unless it was mating season, you know what I mean, but who knows. It could be, I mean, you can't really rule anything out. Um, you literally would have to do like a, a very hard investigation. There was not much right, yeah, information, it's kind of odd. I know, that, I know that somebody saw something in 2018. They're out there partying and, and they saw something. They and then you, they never gave like any type of like description. It's kind of odd. There's a bigger one. This right here, I'm thinking, came from the lake. Somebody brought it up from here and was eating these. I'm thinking these are in the um, from the river and they were brought here. This specific area. You see what I'm saying? See this right here? This is. I don't know if that. I think that's more of the river, and not the um, land ones. I believe a land one would be a lot smaller. This is a little bit too big. Some of the research that we did um, was a little, a little odd. The FBI were involved, uh, offering some big rewards. And it was kind of odd because it's not their jurisdiction. They're looking for cryptid, which is a little odd. And the city of Round Rock quickly um, dismissed the whole thing. They said it was to get kids on the trails because it, it was a new project, I believe. I know there was a couple deaths on Brushy Creek. Not much information. Usually when someone dies, they have an obituary, they, they, they have like who, where, what, when, and how, their family, they even give their, their funeral service. Nothing. Case is still, what, closed, and then they have opened one, I believe, and then they closed it, and then they, it just goes back and forth. So my thing is, though, who has jurisdiction of that? People do have a right to, to know what is going on in their community. Um, I mean, people can petition, do a, a information a Freedom Information Act, but, See what I'm saying? They're all in that area. If you if you fan out, they're they're just right there. It looks like something sat sat down right there and was eating them things. See the big groove right here? You see some butt cheeks right here. See that? You see it looks like something something sat here. And then was just like flinging them. Kind of like if you're if you're eating seeds, you're sitting like a baseball player and they're sitting down, they go spit them out or they chew them out. Look them out. I mean, I doubt anybody would come here and, and just do that. You know what I mean? It's a little odd. I try to like, I, I want to put pieces to a puzzle and then I'll start eliminating it. So I do believe it's something's out here. There's hardly any evidence about it. I mean, you could use the desk. I mean, the desk could be anybody dies anywhere. But the thing is, though, it's a, it's a piece of the puzzle that that's a strong piece of the puzzle. 
and there's no information on it. Is it possible it could be a cover? Yeah. And I think I think uh, the, the citizens in this area should petition to find out what the truth is. The FBI has been in this area. The cops have been in this area, but they're supposed to release information to the public. That's They're not, which is illegal. On a federal level, a state level. I, I think it's a safety issue, and um, something's going on here, and people have um, been killed, deceased. And could it could they have been on drugs? We don't know. Could they have been homeless? Yeah, but nothing's ever been said. The people of this area do have a right to know. The people of the state of Texas need to know. If I was a, an active police officer right now, even community police um, or some type, something like that, or a reserve peace officer, I'd be like, hey, pretty area, green, insects, animals, but um, be careful. You know, there's still kind of wildness, you know, there's, um, and uh, stuff like that. I didn't want to go like CEO because, no, like I said, I, I use science, science to prove yeah. things, and, no, that's perfect. and I'm just trying to help you out, you know. So, like, if someone, so if somebody at a college sees a documentary, they're all like, okay, this guy's using some good scientific oh, yeah. terminology. So, yeah. no, personally, something fucked up is going on. Let me record that part. Just say what you just said. I think on a, on a spoof level, I think something fucking is going on. Um, that's bad really bad. Um, I don't know what um, hazard area, you know, like well, how bad it is, but something needs to be fucking done in my personal opinion. Like, my heart tells me like, when I when I go here, I when I'm rucking, I usually carry my, my 9 mil on me and my, um, my, my knife. When I'm running, I carry a knife. You know, I do self-defense, so I'm kind of like, I'm okay. But like, if this is like a, a some type of creature, they don't want to. They, they need to be held accountable if it's something like that. It could be that. It it sounds realistic slash fictional, but nobody knows. With all this unusual activity here, it was only going to be a matter of time before government agencies started taking an interest in the area. But it wasn't until 2017 when the extent of government involvement was disclosed. In 2016, three bodies were discovered along the Brushy Creek and Round Rock. Two of the bodies were discovered six days apart. now in what I used to call the Haunted Woods, but this is Brushy Creek, I don't know, from the intersection with Sam Bass, what, a mile and a half, two miles? Yeah, pretty close. Do terrible with directions, but headed towards the intersection with Carmer and all the parks that are now up there. Here's my whole childhood was spent coming down here, yeah, like I said, pretty much every day. Yeah. You know, the Harry Man was just a, a legend, you know, or just like a 
I guess something as a kid you never really pay attention to, but I remember our neighbors would go out with my little stepsister and my little brother, and they'll, you know, just the neighborhood kids. Cause it's kind of the same deal as whenever I was a kid coming down here all the time. But I don't think they made it actually to the water. They were more in, in the woods over here. And yeah, I think they're the one who first started calling it the haunted woods. And the way that they described it was there was like, shadow children or like spirit people and they were like yeah they speak african and they're you know so tall and they creep around in the trees and that was like a thing you know that wasn't i'm not just coming up you know that was like what they said and it was like oh kids you know that was kind of the the clue or the catalyst for kind of keeping a little closer eye on what was actually going on around here when I was out here. Because I think I had been so conditioned with every bend in this water, every stone, every... I knew where the carp were, I knew where the perch were, I knew where the deer trails were, I knew... I was so familiar with this place, it was... I mean, I knew it better than I knew our high school. It was like... It was really crazy how familiar I was with this place. And I started taking people out here with me and they were really hesitant. And I'm not talking one or two people. I mean, four, five, six, seven people would just kind of be like, I'm good. You know, not like, I don't want to go, there's ghosts. It was like, no, nah, it was real sketchy. It was like, I'm okay, I, 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 you know, I got something to do. And it just happened so often. And then finally I was dating this girl and she was like, doing that and then later her story was this and this is the honest to god truth what she told me was that we were there was a bench that was just thrown across the barbed wire obviously it's not there anymore but uh you could hop the fence and there was a bench kind of in this grove of cedar i guess they're called juniper trees and uh i had stashed some books out there which is kind of weird. Anyway, me being me, I'm like, oh, you're good, even though it's dark and we're alone in this haunted wood. Uh, you stay here, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab a book that I want you to, to borrow from me. Anyway, she said that when I was gone, she started kind of having this strange sensation that she wasn't alone. And that somewhere nearby, one kind of poked its head out and then went back and then she was like oh shit like you know this is new this is not something i've ever dealt with before and then pretty soon there was more and that's all she really said was a couple other ones like stepped out from behind plants and they weren't malicious and i don't think they were trying to scare her it was more just kind of curiosity like who is here in our in our area sort of and then I came crashing through the woods and and you know she didn't tell me right away I don't know if it was later that night or if it was I think it was a while later she had actually spoken to somebody else who had had similar experiences I never got that story uh, and that's when she just wanted to be like hey this is what happened that night. And it was weird because I remember her acting funny after that. And that was kind of the beginning. But we were, they'd done it several times, uh, blocked off the road. And then I think dug these real deep six foot trenches when they were replacing the water line or expanding the water line, something to do with water. And I mean, you, the, the road was impassable. There was no, I mean, you could hardly even walk. You'd have to kind of continue down the road on one side or the other. But a, as far as driving, it was just a no-go. We were coming down from there. Uh, must have been eight, nine o'clock at night, late, but not real late. And uh, there was these big concrete, uh, tubes. I don't know exactly what they're called, but I don't know, three feet high, three feet uh, diameter, 
uh, concrete tubes. And we were all, uh, you know, <laughs> we had been having fun and stuff and kind of causing trouble. So when we were coming down, we were trying to be incognito and all of a sudden we all saw headlights, which instinctively we all dove into these little, you know, we, we ducked for cover and we were hiding before any of us really realized that this road is, is, is impassable. It's closed. There's no vehicle that could be driving. Um, and we waited and we waited and we waited, but we, we had seen headlights driving towards us at, you know, a typical speed, 15, 30 miles an hour. I don't know. And, and we all eventually, the time elapsed where you would think the car would pass and then assuming that the car had stopped and then continued it still didn't pass and when we came out there was there was never anything like there was no there's no there's no car nothing but you know there we were at a distance to where you would have seen the red parking you know the 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 rear the tail lights in reverse and backing up and we would have heard it we weren't that far away and so that's the first personal experience i had with some really weird, unexplainable phenomenon. And I was in my early 20s uh, going to ACC and, and just working at one of these, there used to be a deli off of Sand Bass called Red, Red Onion Market. And one of the guys was, yeah, he was also a, a Marines veteran. And he was like, you know, could you take me out there? And I was like, yeah, sure, you know, we can go out there. Um, and so we went, I took him to the creek, and we just, you know, I kind of told him everything we've talked about now. And then uh, we hopped over the fence, and we must have been actually right around this area that we're, that we're at, maybe a little further that way. Um, and we built the fire, and we were roasting, you know, hot dog weenies or whatever. Um, and again, I had like cashed uh, an emergency blanket and some other odds and ends in the nook of this tree. Uh, yeah, so this is probably my basic, biggest experience. The biggest thing that I could say from my personal experience here, something happened that is unexplainable. Uh, and this is no exaggeration like I'm just gonna try and tell it as it happened so I go to this oak and I'm searching for this emergency blanket but as I'm walking towards it it's already strewn on the ground and everything that I had had was just kind of thrown out on 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 the on the grass and it must have been years since I had, had been out there, really. And uh, the moon was shining, and, and I pick up the, the emergency blanket, and it has like a tin, like a foil uh, coating on the outside. And when I opened it up and spread it out, the moonlight shone down on it, and you could see these slits that were cut one after another in like a half moon shape and like right at that moment that I did that and the moon shone on it there's like this really weird sensation that came over me like oh this isn't good you know like it was almost like I, I Indiana Jones took the skull you know like something something just happened like almost like I had called something on over to us or revealed our location and the guy even looked at me you know nothing was said and he just looked at me dead in the eyes and was just like the hunter has become the hunted you know and this is somebody with combat experience so he was kind of on the same level as me like whoa we we just we just got ourselves in some shit you know and uh, we went back to the fire and it wasn't long before we heard like 
a great crashing through the trees towards us and not a deer you know definitely bigger than a deer which probably not a cow that's not cow behavior and it was very aggressive and I mean it was like like really coming fast and we both we both ran we both turned to the fence facing this street right he, right you know this street right here we hopped the fence running terrified and we ran over I mean we got to the street and it was just like our hearts were pumping we didn't know what to do and so we continued a little ways towards the creek uh, you know and and it happened again it happened again and so we ran back down this direction and we got to the street and uh, it was just kind of like what do we do um, and it definitely was like we're being followed you know and I don't think we heard it again for a while but we were it wasn't over with us that night uh, we we went to the bridge where the guardrail was coming over uh, the Brushy Creek and we sat down and debated like you know we had planned on sleeping out uh, now where do we go and he had rented a place in Creek Bend I was living in Bentry at the time and so we were just kind of discussing like whoa what do we do and uh, right about that time, it was like somebody just took an aluminum baseball bat and just bashed the guardrail or took a giant stone and just launched it or something, hit that stone, hit that guardrail, and it was just a thud and, and just kind of this echo. And we bolted again and we ran up Creek Bend and I guess in our minds as kids it's like you get to your safety zone or you get in your house or you get under the blankets and it's gone but this really otherworldly sound followed us after that it was like a it, it would sound almost like a dog barking and then about midway through it would kind of hiccup into this like very sounded like a duck quacking I know it sounds stupid but it was like this really weird creature sound that followed us for a good hour I mean we even went over by the the woods swimming pool there's some benches over there and we kind of waited for it to kind of lose our scent and go away and it followed us it followed us for a good hour and a half before it was just like and I took my buddy back to my house and snuck him in and let him sleep in our house that night because he was, this is a Marine, this is a combat veteran who was too afraid to go home. I don't know if it's an alien, I don't know if it's uh, the, the hairy man, Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Skunk Ape, you know, whatever name it, that's kind of unimportant like to me it was some sort of guardian some sort of guard that was not happy with us being there for the purpose that we had in being there um, and up until that time I, I had never felt like my presence was a threat but I always knew that I was never alone out here and I think that's why it was just coined the haunted woods is because there were beings here there was a presence here that that was not of this world or of our kind of understanding of this of this world I know that sounds really weird but that's the God honest truth from, from my experience out here, I wouldn't feel like I'm saying something disingenuous.
to my experience being out here. That is, that is, that is the best way I can answer that question. The legend of Harry Mann Road continues to grow with every new documented case. And as the cases stack up, so does the evidence of an unknown living being that calls the Harry Mann Road area home.